Hello, I'm the Beauty Professor, and you can find my beauty blog at beautyprofessor.com. Today I'm excited to show you a fall face tutorial. I'm working with richer shades and also brand new formulas that have been serving me well for the last month or so. Chiefly, I'm going to be demonstrating these brand new By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powders. These powders are exceptional because they mattify while locking in moisture, they blur imperfections, they set your makeup, and they hydrate. Also, they're tinted and that allows you way more versatility and creativity in perfecting your skin and aligning with the look that you planned. Also, I'm going to be showing you some new lipsticks from Decorte. It's a really interesting eyeshadows with lovely longevity. I did want to mention that this video is sponsored by By Terry, but as always, all of my thoughts, opinions, and preferences are 100% completely my own. Well, for September has been going well so far. Mine is full of teaching and beauty writing, and of course, lots of quality time with Johanna. So I'm really grateful, and I hope all good things for you guys. Let's begin the tutorial. So I've been curling my hair a lot lately. I Got it cut four inches, it's lighter, it's easier. My mom cuts it for me, which I'm internally grateful for. And with that little bit shorter length, I've been able to revisit the hot rollers. I'm sparing you the process of watching me put them in and then take them all out, but I did want to address the fact that this is after about five minutes with my Calissa Tools hot rollers, which I just found on Amazon and ordered and absolutely love. <laughs> And there we are. Curls complete. I already primed my face with a single pump of the Augustina Spot in the Rich Cream. I've talked about this countless times in videos. I'm still a devotee. I love it because it's just a single step for taking care of anti-aging and hydration. Then I am going to show you this new eye product I've been working with. It's the La Prairie Skin Caviar Eye Lift. This is great for daytime because it's a little bit lighter. It's a dual chambered eye serum that does contribute to a lifting effect. So I'm just gonna tap it into my under eye regions here, making sure to delicately distribute the formula and it just lifts and tightens taking care of my orbital region in a luxurious way. For primer today, I'm working with the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydro Primer. I've used this many times in the past in both the clear, which is what I'm using right now, and the tinted versions. And I love the way that it fills in pores and fine lines while perfectly prepping your face for the foundation to come. I just tap it into my skin. It's got a cooling effect, and you can see it completely disappears on the face. There's no white cast or even any texture for that matter. And next I'm going to apply the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. I wear this in shade 7.5 Neutral, which is a great match for my olive skin. Now, up, off the top, just know it's a very pigmented formula. I use this much for my entire face and it actually feels like a little too much, so I don't always end up applying everything. I'm gonna start here and I'll just kind of work the initial application into the center of my face here like this. And then I'll go ahead and blend with my pre-dampened beauty blender. All right, so I've blended everything out and just to show you, that was a single pump. Here is the remainder of the foundation on my hand. I didn't even go ahead and apply the entire very small pump because I feel like it's more foundation than my skin needs. Like I said, buildable medium to full coverage lasts for the entire day and it plays really well with sensitive skin like mine is. I've been testing it for the last month and a half and I'm very impressed. One thing I like to do to make sure that my skin looks as natural as possible is go ahead and rub my nose a little bit and get some of that foundation off. I try not to over apply foundation on my nose anyway, but I feel like if you do this, then your natural skin, especially on the nose, whatever freckles you may have, shines through and your whole face just looks a lot more natural. For concealer, and I feel like I don't need to conceal much just because of the significant coverage of this foundation, but for concealer, I'm working with a cult classic, the Clay de Peau 
concealer in the shade almond it's very pigmented i like to apply it straight from the bullet very lightly just a little swipe on either under eye region and then i'll go ahead and back in with my dampened beauty blender and just distribute it evenly tapping it into the skin to I set my concealer for a long day i'm going to go ahead and use the by terry hyaluronic tinted hydro powder in shade one which is rosy white this is a super finely milled pale pink powder that just basically goes on translucently. I'm going to use the flat end of this dual side powder brush and just tap it into my under eye region. I've told you guys before, I'm not a fan of baking per se. I feel like that takes a long time, more time than I have. And I, for me, it's just an unnecessary step in my routine. But setting my under eye region with a very finely milled powder that's another thing entirely. So this powder just brightens and it's invisible on the skin. It's also great for dry skin because it is infused with hyaluronic acid, which means that it's not going to cling to dry patches. It actually creates a cooling veil of moisture. Really quickly, I will go ahead and use the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel in Chestnut. This is probably tube number five in my life. I love it so much to go ahead and set my brows. And I just sweep it through, brushing upwards like this. It creates depth, dimension, hold, a feathery effect. And you can even see just right now between my very natural undone brow and finished brow, how just a few strokes make a significant difference. I do this one time in the morning and it'll stay on all day without flaking. For bronzer today, I'm working with a brand new Bronzer from Lawless, it's called Summer Skin and it's the Velvet Matte Bronzer. It does come in two shades. This is Golden Hour, which is great for light and medium skin tones. And then the more intense Blazed, which is great for medium to tan and rich skin tones. So I think just because I apply bronzer in a hurry most of the time, it's better for me to go with a lighter color. But I, I can't wait to experiment with Blazed a little bit later on when I can be more precise. I'm using my Surratt Artistique Cheek Brush and I will just go ahead and suck my cheeks in, applying it in the hollow. You can see that it's a nice matte finish. It's not glowy, it's not shimmery, but it's also not flat. It's got a velvet texture that I think just lends to the overall health of your skin. And as is the case with all Lawless products, they're completely clean, no toxins, no chemicals, just beautiful formulations. For blush, I am working with the Westman Atelier Baby Cheeks Blush in the shade Truchette, which is the newest addition to my Westman collection. I just apply it straight from the bullet like this, and you can see it's a beautiful kind of peachy pink, but it does really yield some lovely color. So I'm putting it right here, and now I'm done. Just kidding, I'm gonna actually blend it in right now because I think it needs that. I like to just use the beauty blender that I've been working with to just make this second skin on my cheeks. It's already dampened, it's familiar with the other product I've used. And so now you just have a nice natural flush going on that doesn't look obvious on the cheeks. Guys, I'm working with the Lorac Luxe Diamond Cream Eyeshadow. I had a few of my followers on Instagram and on the blog tell me about this formula and ask me to review it because they'd had such great experiences with it. So I always love getting tips and suggestions from those in the Beauty Professor community. I am working with two shades today. One is called Silk, which is a peachy pink, very warm. And then I'm going to use this golden shade called Satin as a transition shade up to my brows. So using a small eyeshadow brush, I'm just gonna apply it straight from the brush here. This is a cream formula with buildability and lots and lots of luminosity. You can see that it layers in intensity and I'm just bringing it all over the upper lid region here. Very silky, very smooth, and I'm told it's completely crease-free and wears for hours on end. And then I'm going to bring a little more of this silk shade right into my under eye region here, right the lash line. I feel like anytime you do this, it adds a nice stream of continuity to your eye look, and it's a really easy way to look like you've spent more time on your eyes than you actually have. And then I'll go ahead, like I said, 
and use this very neutral pale gold shade called Satin. I'm using the same brush per usual and I'm just bringing this up to my brow bone here. You can see that it creates a nice blended transition, it catches the light here right on the arch and it's still a distinct color in contrast to the silk shade. Here is the final eye look with these two shadows. And I have to say, I'm very impressed so far. This took me like 30 seconds to create this whole look and I'm gonna give it a go again tomorrow when I'm on campus all day. Right. To complete the eyes, I'm only doing two more steps, two more products. The first is the Sisley Fido Cold Star in sparkling black. I've gone through many. I like to go ahead and put it in my waterline, just sweeping it gently. This is a waterproof formula, so once you've applied it, it stays in place all day. It's not going to smear or melt off. I have allergies, I wear contacts for nearsightedness, and so my eyes are about as high maintenance as they could be, and this stays in place, which is a testament to the formula. For mascara, I am using my beloved by Terry Lash Expert Twist Brush Mascara. This has a genius dual purpose wand. I've shown you guys it so many times over. And whereas I used to like to apply it volumizing and then lengthening, lately I've been doing it the way you're supposed to do it, which is lengthening first and then volumizing. All right, so I just sweep it through. The formula is long wearing, resists flaking, doesn't smear once it's set, it behaves like a waterproof formula, but it's not purporting to be waterproof, but I get waterproof wear out of it. All right, so you can already see lashes, no lashes. Go ahead and continue my lower lash region here with the lengthening brush setting. And another coat will involve the volumizing setting, which kind of scrunches the bristles together so you can just build that density I love it when a product performs so well every single time. And obviously you're watching this in real time, you can see how significant this performance is. Okay. For lips, I'm going to lightly line them with this Pat McGrath Done Undone Lip Liner. Okay, I ordered this about a month and a half ago. The fact that it's at this level, it's not because the product runs through quickly, it's because I've used it so consistently since then. I can't stop. It's just the greatest lip color, pinky nude, that you can just gently overline your lips with. It matches any lipstick you wear. And normally, I'm pairing it with nudes and pinks. Today, I'm going to show you a more intense color, but I'll show you how seamlessly this works with that shade as well. So now that I've prepped my lips, I'm going to apply a brand new lip color formula from Decorte. And this is the Rouge Velvet Lipstick. It is, just as the name would imply, creamy, velvety. It's not matte. There's a soft shine to it, but it feels so lush on the lips. Now, I've been wearing a lot of the shade BE801. This is nude. And it is, as the name would imply, a stunning, creamy, opaque nude. I mean, this was one pass on the hand. My temptation with this video was to wear this because this is the shade that I've been reaching for. But I am going to get out of my comfort zone a little bit and wear RD400, which is a lovely, cool, slightly pink red. I'm applying it straight from the bullet right now and you'll be able to see the immediate impact of this formula. Finishing this entire face with a few more Key by Terry products, specifically the Hyaluronic Tinted Powder to start. So I'm going to use shade 500 Medium Dark. Now certainly that's not my skin tone right now, but I'm using this Surratt Highlight Brush to go ahead and sweep this tone along the perimeters of my face and my cheekbones, just where I put bronzer. And I'm actually setting my bronzer with this powder while adding a nice dash of warmth. It's so subtle, but so effective. And the fact that these powders are tinted means that you can play around with them for more makeup effects, like a bronzer. And onward, 
I'm going to use the dual sided powder brush from By Terry, the fluffy side, to set this whole look with shade number 300 medium fair. Now, rarely am I fair in any powder whatsoever, but medium fair is a lovely kind of olivey yellow that's completely appropriate for light to medium skin tones. So just know that now. I'm just gonna put a little bit in the lid here, swirl it about, and then blend. To impart just a touch of glow, I'll go ahead and use this Surratt highlight brush once again and the By Terry Brightening CC Powder. This is in shade three, Apricot Glow, and I'm just going to focus it on the high points of my face. I wouldn't call this a traditional highlighter because it's not as obvious or overt as that, but it does just give your skin an extra something, a touch of light, and I feel like it's the right way to finish this particular look. I truly hope you enjoyed this tutorial and saw some products that have piqued your interest and also maybe found some inspiration for how to use these By Terry Hyaluronic Hydro Powders in their tinted formula. I will have swatches of everything on Beauty Professors, so don't forget to visit the blog below. And question as, <laughs> as always, don't forget to leave your questions and comments below. I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Take care.